You had a, a, a terrific opportunity today. You interviewed the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey. Right, and, and for perspective, this took place about a half an hour, an hour before uh, we began to learn that Morsi uh, had what was no longer the president, at least uh, according to the U.S. military. But we did talk about these amazing uh, pictures that we're all seeing. He called them remarkable. He said, I think the demonstrations insofar as they remain peaceful uh, certainly are remarkable. He said they also proved that it, quote, takes time for democracy to stick. We then went on to what really is his bailiwick, Wolf, and, and that is those mil the military to military connection, the U.S. military and the Egyptian military. And here's some of what he had to say. The military to military mm -hmm. context. Are, are those contacts still stable? Are they strong? Do you feel when you see on TV the military saying, hey, uh, President Morsi, you've either got to do something and meet some of these demands or we're going to take over. Are you knowing these people? Are you on the know in that sort of thing? I mean, what are the, what's the nature of your conversations? Well, to your question about the nature of the relationship with the Egyptian armed forces, it's ac it was actually trending very even more strongly than it had been for maybe the last 10 years because we committed to that to try to help them uh, find their way in a new system. You know, they went from being, the, the armed forces ran the country for, for several decades, and they were transitioning themselves into their role in a democracy. Um, I'm not in the know about exactly what they're gonna do. My conversations with them have been principally about, uh, a sh I wanted to hear, get their assurance that they would protect our U.S. citizens, and they will. I wanted to encourage them uh, to protect all the Egyptian people, not to take sides in any particular issue, and to ensure that they um, were a part of the, of the uh, resolution of this, but in, a, in, a, in their proper role as a military, which is to ensure stability but not uh, try to influence the outcome. And you feel confident with the assurances you've gotten? Well, uh, I, I feel confident that, that we have a close enough relationship that they listen. Um, you know, it's, at the end of the day, it's their country and they will find their way, but there will be consequences if it, if it is badly handled. I mean, there's laws uh, that, that bind us on how we deal with these kinds of situations. And you mean the U.S., how yeah. the U.S. deals, yeah. for instance? Well, for instance, if, if, uh, if this were to be seen as a coup, then it would limit our ability to have the kind of relationship we think we need with the Egyptian armed forces. I see. So again, Wolf uh, talking about, you know, what, what are they going to call this? I, I think he was also uh, very interesting about, he said, look, our, our first priority here was protecting the Americans we know there. He said several hundred American citizens working there, and Jill's been reporting on, uh, you know, the possible, that possible evacuation. He said there are about 60,000 dual passport American Egyptian uh, citizens that they also made a point to say, we, you need to keep folks safe. The U.S. has a huge embassy in Cairo. I was there in January. What is so depressing, Candy, is to see the concrete bunkers mm -hmm. surrounding that embassy. You can't get close to it. They are so worried about security. And now, as Jill Doherty was reporting, they've asked all so-called non-essential personnel, family members to leave. Uh, this is a huge, huge development. Security concerns, enormous right now for the U.S. Uh, in Cairo. And there's a lot of anger at the U.S. from all sides for whatever reason, some of it uh, not necessarily justified, but it's a, as General Dempsey pointed out, this is a major concern. Yeah.